In this video, I'm going to show you how to add an adjustable handle to any of your bags. Adding an adjustable handle makes your purse even more versatile. It can go from a shoulder to a crossbody in just a few seconds. Here's one that I've done out of cork with a half inch slide. This is our Lola pattern. You can also make them out of cotton or canvas like I have here. This is a one inch. And you can even make them removable like I have here for the road trip bag. So let's get started. So let's talk first about the hardware you'll need to add an adjustable handle to your bag. First, you're going to need your slide. This is a one inch slide. The measurement is measured on the inside, not the outside. And our slides have a movable bar. Sometimes you'll see them where these are in a fixed center position. Either one will work for this technique. You're also going to need a rectangle ring. This is going to be for the tab part. This is where the fabric will loop through to make it so it can be adjusted from long to short very easily. With just these two simple pieces, you can make an adjustable handle. If you are trying to make one that is removable, you will need to also get some swivel hooks. So this is for the road trip bag, which is a large overnight bag. This is a one and a half inch size, and I've added swivel hooks on each end. Here's my uh, slide right here. And I have skipped the rectangle ring part. Essentially, this is the rectangle ring, and I've added this on the other end so I can remove it. Those are the pieces you would need to make it adjustable and removable. You would also need something for your hooks to attach to, like a D-ring, a triangle ring, or even rectangle rings. But in today's video, we're just going to talk about making a very simple handle using these two pieces. So I've gone ahead and I've already prepared my handle. This one is out of cork and this is out of fabric. So when it comes to cork, I just fold mine in half. You can see I have some little frays here because I haven't finished the edges like I normally would but this is just for demo purposes. I've gone ahead and folded it in half. I have a folded edge here. I have a raw edge here, and I've done my top stitching an eighth and a quarter of an inch on both sides. I like to do this on all of my handles, unless it's a half inch wide. Anything an inch or wider, I like that. I just feel like it looks more professional. And on this handle right here, this is cotton. I've done the same thing. However, when I fold my cotton handles, they're actually folded four times. So there's four pieces of fabric and interfacing all folded in here. Here is my open edge and here is my closed edge. The only raw edges are going to be down on the bottom of this one. The only difference in prepping a cotton handle versus a cork handle is that on one end, I've gone ahead and I've shorted my interfacing a couple of inches. You can see right here, there's a little bit of a divot. That's where my interfacing stops. And the reason I do that is because I'm gonna have to fold this over a couple of times to hide this raw edge. And if I leave the interfacing in here, that would essentially be 12 layers of fabric and 12 layers of interfacing that I would be folding. I find that on most of my machines to be a little bit too much. My heavy duty machine can handle it, but I know that a lot of you don't have one of those. So I just like to do this with the short interfacing. I find it easier. To prepare your tab, all I do, if it's a cork handle, again, I fold it in half and do my top stitching, and I just trim off a four inch segment from the end of my handle. I find it easier to top stitch an entire long piece rather than a short piece and a long piece. So I just go ahead and trim off a four inch piece, and that will be my tab. Um, when it comes to cork, because we don't have to worry about the raw edges since they don't fray and there's no interfacing, I don't have to do any special preparation. When it comes to cotton, however, because I do have multiple layers of fabric and interfacing, what I do for my tab is I short the interfacing on both ends. So on the handle part on my cotton, I've only shorted a couple of inches on one end. On the tab, I short it on both ends. And what I mean by that is this handle, when it's cut, is four inches wide. That's what makes a one inch wide finished piece. And it's four inches this way. So it's a four inch by four inch square. And the interfacing is actually only two inches by four inches. And I fuse it in the center so that both of my ends are just fabric. I top stitch it just the same. But what this is gonna do is when it's folded and put into my bag, I have less that I have to worry about sewing through here. I only have have eight layers of fabric, which is still a lot, but at least I don't have an additional eight layers of interfacing. And I put interfacing on this part because that's where the hardware will be, and I want to have a little bit of extra durability. So let's grab our hardware and I'll show you how to make this very simple handle. So we're going to start with the tab, and it's actually very, very simple. You're just going to take your rectangle ring, and these rectangle rings do have a split right here, so I like to put that in the center so it's hidden. You're just going to slide your piece on and fold it in half. 
Again, because this is cotton, I only have interfacing up here and none down here. So what I like to do is stitch about an eighth of an inch down on this end. That's just gonna keep my edges together. And then I like to stitch up here right at the base of the interfacing. If your machine allows it, you can absolutely go closer. And depending on what machine I'm using, I can usually get through those layers. It just needs to go back and forth a couple of times to lock that in place. When it comes to cork, I've already prepared my cork tab. And what I've done is looped my piece through just the same, and I folded it down about an inch from the end. I could absolutely fold it in half like I would on the cotton, but then this area down here would get a little bit thick in the seam. So what I like to do is fold it about three quarters of the way. I stitch right here a few times, and I stitch right here. Both of these will show when the bag is finished. Ideally, that will face inward and this will face outward. So you do wanna make sure you match your top and bobbin thread. When it comes to cotton, you are gonna see both sides, especially up here, but down here, the stitching really doesn't matter because that will be in the seam allowance. So that's how my tab is going to look, very simple. So let's go ahead and talk about how to add the slide part. So there is my slide. And I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my handle and I'm starting down on one end. It really doesn't matter which end. You're gonna take your adjustable bar right here and I just grab it between my fingers so I can hold the bar kind of in the middle. I'm gonna take my handle and loop it up and over the center bar. So just like this, I bring this up and then over. So I slide my uh, fabric down or my cork uh, about an inch or so, inch and a half. Um, this is a little over an inch. It, there's really no specific measurement for this. It's whatever you, you know, whatever you do. So you're just going to stitch again right here, back and forth a few times to lock that in place close to this edge, about an eighth of an inch. And then on this, I try to stitch as close to the hardware as I can get. Again, it depends on the foot and it depends on the machine. So I've stitched in two places to reinforce it. This will still be loose. This has some movement and that's what we want. And here's what it looks like when it's all done. So there is my piece. So on this one, I actually only stitched on the eighth inch part, but normally I would also stitch up here. But again, it's not a big deal if you don't. I just do a lot of that because I think it looks a little bit nicer. So once I have this prepared and I have my tab, how do I get those on there so they work properly? Let me show you. So you're just gonna take this opposite end. So I have my slide here and I have my opposite end here. And I'm going to take my tab and put my tab right on here. And I am a little fussy. I like to make sure that those folded edges and the raw edges are on the same side. So I just put that on here and this will stay loose. Just let that kind of hang down. So that's gonna be loose down here. And let me just back this camera up a little bit so you can see. There we go. Okay, so what I wanna make sure, this is really important, is that this tab is going towards the outside. I want this hanging out and I wanna make sure that my handle is not twisted at all. So just like that, I've made sure that the handle is not twisted, the tab stays loose, it does not get sewn in place. And now I will take this end and I will do the same thing coming up and over that middle bar again. So I'm just gonna slide this up and I'm gonna bring it right back down, just like that and I'm done. I don't need to do anything else for now. I'll continue on making my bag, and when it's time, I will just sew these two ends into the seams, and that's how I make my handle. When it comes to adding a slide onto the cotton, you're going to pick the end that has no interfacing. And what you're gonna do, the same technique, you're going to bring your fabric up and over the center bar. So I come up, and I bring that over, you can see the bar is right there. And I slide this down until it kind of hits the top of the interfacing. Now what I'm gonna do is fold this one time like that and then bring it right down here, just like so. And now I'm gonna go ahead and stitch here. I can stitch just once or twice. I can do a decorative stitch, but what that's gonna do is hide that raw edge. I find that this works um, easier than having a raw edge here and trying to satin stitch over it, which I've tried in the past. But if I just fold that end under and tuck that in there, I'm all set. And then all I have to do is continue on adding my tab, looping it through, and then I'm ready to add that to my purse. So this is the Emily mini messenger bag. And here is my cotton canvas. 
you can see that I have folded that edge right there. You can add a little bit of fray check there if you want to. You could do a little satin stitch on that end if it bothers you. I don't find that it bothers me in any way. So I have that folded over and then brought down. I've gone ahead and stitched right here. I have that looped through and then down on this end, you can see nice long handle. Here is my tab and my interfacing is short. You can see it kind of just bends right there. So the non-interfaced ends are in the seam and there's a little bit of interfacing right here, which, which gives it a little bit of extra stability. And that's as simple as it is to add an adjustable strap to any of your bags. You can do it in cotton, in canvas, in cork. We do carry on the website half inch, one inch, and one and a half inch slide sets. If you need any other um, hardware or have any questions, feel free to contact me. And I hope you enjoy adding a slide handle to any of your bags.